Hi everyone, happy holidays and welcome back to the channel. Today we have another Blender community roundup where we take a look at interesting things happening in and around the Blender community. In this video, we have a couple of new courses, including some deals I don't want you to miss out on. And of course, a variety of interesting channels producing educational content, some with large followings and some with smaller followings that I think deserve some more attention. There's also a new Blender Open movie, stuff relating to simulation nodes we need to talk about. So yeah, there's a lot to go through. So if you haven't already, grab a drink and let's get into it. So the first thing I want to tell you about is that our friends over at CG Boost have put out a new course. This one is related to the grease pencil for Blender. So if you've been interested in learning how to use the grease pencil to make 2.5D animations, then this is now the quintessential course for you. And what's interesting about this course is that it's actually been made by someone that I have recommended in this series before, Kevin, Kevin Ramirez, also known as Kevandrum on YouTube. The quality of their artwork and what they've managed to do with grease pencil is absolutely amazing. So I think they've chosen the perfect person to make this course with. If you go onto the course page, you'll see an overview of what's contained in the course, as well as an introductory video by Kevin kind of explaining what's there. So he'll take you through all of the fundamentals relating to grease pencil, how the tools work. You can use a tablet if you like, it's kind of optional, but the pressure sensitivity is a good thing to have with grease pencil. And the aim of this course is to build up this lovely village scene. So they'll show you how to layer it all together, background, middle ground, foreground, and also how to add some animated elements to it as well. And if you have taken a look at Kevin's previous content on YouTube, you'll know just how good they are at explaining things. Their presentation style is super well welcoming, warm, colourful I would say, and very easy to follow along with. You may know if you've been following this channel for a while that I recommend a lot of CG Boost content. I speak to them whenever I can. They tend to just like pick out some of the best creators in the community and then help them make courses. So I think they're doing a really good job. If you want to check this out then I'll leave my affiliate link in the description. And also if you are interested the course is 20% off until January the 2nd so you don't have long to get it at this sale price. So you know if you have any of that Christmas money laying around then educational content is always a good investment. Yeah, anyway, talking about CG Boost, one of the previous courses they did, which was the Substance Painter Launchpad, teaching you about how to use Substance Painter, which is obviously not Blender, but it is still a good course made by a Blender artist, Martin Kleckner, working on the Heroes of Bronze short film. They're going to sunset this course soon, which means it won't be available on the site anymore. That's not because it's a bad course, it's just because the branding for CG Boost is moving towards free and open source software as a priority. So what they're doing is they're giving this course away for 50% off before it disappears. So if you want to get hold of it before it goes, then again, now is the time to do it. So I will leave my link for that in the description as well. The next new course I want to talk about comes from Creative Shrimp, who are also known for doing some really high quality educational content for Blender, and it's the Cinematic Lighting in Blender course. So this is available on Blender Market, and the point of this course is to take your artwork from mediocre lighting to really advanced lighting, basically how to make things pop using techniques across both rendering engines, so Cycles and DV. There's about six plus hours of step-by-step -step content with English closed captions, and you do also of course get access to project files. So if you're interested in learning more about how to develop your lighting skills, specifically with a cinematic flair, then I do recommend this content. Again, Creative Shrimp courses have always been quite good. Recently, they even did a photogrammetry course, so they're kind of delving into the more realistic aspects of 3D. So yeah, super interesting stuff, link below. So that's course content, let's take a look at some channels. The first channel I want to talk about is someone I've spent a fair bit of time talking to in the past, a lovely and super popular artist on Instagram called James Traley. I've always known as James Films, they do some work for NASA, but while they're not working on this amazing space visualization stuff, they do their own rather peaceful, beautiful work in Blender. You've probably seen some of their scenes floating around on Reddit or other social platforms or even copies of their work in some form, but as well as making this artwork, they also do videos for YouTube. One of their recent ones I think is a really motivational video for people that want to get into learning Blender. It's called 8 Tips to Help You Learn Blender and Become a Better Artist. The tips shared in this video are more like discussion points and advice for people that want to find direction. So things like encouraging yourself to experiment, not following tutorials one for one and actually kind of taking the techniques and using them for your own work, how to seek inspiration from other artists and you know just the importance of practice in general. It's a nice source of motivation this video so I think that if you're new to Blender it might be worth checking out. James is also just a lovely person all round so it might be worth checking out their social media as well for a good dose of inspiration. I also have to recommend this video because a certain someone makes a bit of a cameo. I seem to be appearing in quite a few Blender YouTubers videos nowadays. It's part of my uh, secret Blender community takeover. Anyway, speaking about the community, Blender Bob has been doing an interesting project recently. They've started an open movie project. It's called Tiki, you can have a look at the announcement video here. Tiki, an open full CG movie. The idea behind this is that people come together to make a movie. So Blender Bob has a script, and will basically be managing everything, and then volunteers can come along to help work on the film. Now the thought might cross your mind, is this just unpaid exploitation of the community? Well you see, this project has a bit of a twist, because everything produced for the film, like all of the assets, will be freely available for everyone. That's the open 
part of it. And also, if any money was ever to be produced with the film, that will go straight to the Blender Development Fund. So I think it's an interesting idea. If there's anyone out there looking for something to contribute to in the community, maybe something for your portfolio, then if this sounds interesting to you, then it might be worth checking out. The next channel I want to talk about is someone I met at the Blender conference, a very lovely person who goes by the username Lens Graphics. You can see their channel here on YouTube. If you tend to watch a lot of Blender tutorials, you've probably seen these videos pop up in your recommendation feed. You'll notice the super popular I made Clash of Clans realistic in three days at 2.8 million views at the time of recording. That's a crazy number of views. As well as I made Minecraft RTX actually realistic in 3D software. So they do have a variety of content on here, but they're kind of leaning more into recreating popular culture. And the nice thing about these videos is they're not just results. Lens actually takes you through their creation process, explaining it in a very nice way, breaking down the full process and actually showing you everything. One of the things I really liked about their Minecraft one is that for their final animation, they show a comparison as they walk through, showing the original footage and then their finished rendered version from Blender. So I just think a lot of work and a lot of quality has gone into making these videos, so it's definitely worth checking out. I think this would be an inspiring channel for people that want to learn Blender but don't know exactly what they want to make because I get that question quite a lot. And you know, something that's always a good idea if you can't find any direction with your work is look at popular culture. Like, are there any shows, any films, any games that you like? Anything in particular you want to pay homage to? It's always a good place to start and people tend to resonate a lot with fan art and fan work. So along that same vein, I think a lot of people have been resonating with Lens's recent videos. So if you're interested in this content, then feel free to check them out. Also, thank you for saying hi, Lens. It was very nice meeting you. So while we're here, another channel I want to recommend is the Curtis Holt channel. <gasps> How surprising. If you've been enjoying this video so far, then maybe consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell so you can stay updated on new content. I love sharing all these happenings with you, as well as new Blender update releases, new tools that I've been working on to help you improve your workflow, and just a variety of other content. Before we move on to more recommendations, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has picked up my modular workspaces add-on after the recent update. If you don't know, this is one of my tools for helping to speed up your startup workflow. You can drag and drop collection assets in from the asset browser and unpack them with a single button. It also organizes things for you automatically in the outliner, and I recently did an update to add a variety of really cool looking character display templates. So yeah, if you've been struggling with lighting and you want some really cool demo scenes or collection assets to help display your characters, then I've got you covered. So Blender Made Easy is a pretty popular YouTube channel that's been producing some pretty impressive educational content recently. One in particular I want to highlight is the Blender tutorial creating an exploding missile simulation. The reason I want to highlight this is because not only is the result really cool, it's under half an hour and it goes over quite a lot of different aspects of Blender. So I think overall the educational value of this video is really high. These videos are very well narrated. And another interesting thing about this tutorial is that it uses dynamic paint, which is a feature in Blender that's surprisingly powerful, but also often overlooked. You can use it for getting complex weight group animations. But if you're interested in that, then they will explain it in a much better way than I ever could. Obviously, it goes over some smoke simulation effects, working up to a final result. Whereas you can see missiles are flying towards the ground and creating an explosion. So yeah, if you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, in terms of like the actual effects, then it's a pretty cool demonstration to take a look at. They have also done a variety of other content on the channel. So there's a recent one about doing a freezing effect with geometry nodes. This one's pretty cool because you can also get the icicles animating off the surface there. And also since geometry nodes is a fairly new feature for Blender, having more fun and useful demonstrations to show off what geometry nodes is capable of is a good thing. And I think a lot of people are going to like the results of this one because frost growing effects are going to be useful for so many different types of artwork, especially now around the uh, Christmas and winter time. So yeah, definitely a channel worth a look. So there's an artist I like to follow on Instagram called Luix Lin or Louis Lin, assuming I've pronounced both of those correctly. Their artwork is beautiful calming, and they're good examples of how to use Blender to create interesting artworks, oftentimes making use of some kitbash elements as well. As you can see here, they're making use of the Shogun kit from Kitbash 3D, but I just think all the results are really pretty, and it's just like a lovely addition to my feed, and there's just a lot to enjoy as well. But anyway, recently, they've been making more videos for YouTube as well, so kind of like James Traley, a somewhat popular Instagram artist making content for the YouTube space as well, so let's take a look. Over here, you can see some interesting videos, how to add snow to any assets, Blender tutorial. They also do some breakdowns of their work. They also have how to create detailed foliage scatter with GeoScatter 5, which is an add-on, a very popular add-on for Blender. So one thing I like about seeing actual Blender artists doing YouTube videos as well is you can get like a deeper insight into the creation process. So you can actually see these artists sharing knowledge about the actual use cases for how to use Blender. Uh, yeah, it's very cool. I definitely recommend checking out the channel. It's also really interesting seeing how different artists have adapted Blender to suit their own personal style. Like I like looking 
looking at everyone's different themes and the way they lay out their node groups, the assets they're using, all this different stuff. But I think the recent video about how to add snow to any asset is going to be handy for people. And I believe you can also get a node group they've created available in the description as well. So yeah, notice how I'm showing you these icy and snowy videos, very uh, appropriate for the holiday season. And also I of course think they just deserve some more subscribers. So yeah, check them out. So another channel I've stumbled on recently is actually quite popular, 255,000 subs, Black Mixture. They do a variety of content. If you haven't stumbled on them already, then they do similar content to our channel, but they kind of exist in a Venn diagram where it's not just Blender, but also After Effects content and occasionally Unreal content as well. So you'll notice a few series, top 10 crazy Blender techniques, top 10 crazy After Effects techniques. So they like to do these roundup videos where they take a look at the final project results from different artists using the softwares and yeah, just talk about the things they liked. So if you are a multi-software user kind of moving between these motion graphic spaces where you would see After Effects and the 3D art space like Blender and you enjoy the kinds of content that I'm doing now, then you might find something to enjoy in the Black Mixer channel. So yeah, there might be a little extra something for saturating your recommendation feed. So another channel for educational content I want to recommend is Pixelica CG. They've been doing a lot of very human character centric content recently. And the reason I want to recommend this channel is because I think it's going to be an incredible resource for people that are interested in character sculpting and design in 3D. So a couple of recent videos in particular I want to recommend are the easiest way to sculpt a realistic head in Blender. So in this video they'll describe how to build up like the basic blocky layout for a head to give yourself a much easier starting point for actually sculpting a character head and then how to take that through to a much more advanced stage. And Another really really good video is how to use cloth simulation brushes in Blender the correct way. This is a really great video because they really take the time to explain how the different sculpt brushes work, along with how face sets and masking can be used to assist in your sculpting process for characters, more specifically for usage with clothing, because that's more for what the cloth brush and associated tools are used for. But yeah, I just thought this was like a really really useful resource that I'm sure a lot of people will put in a playlist somewhere as future reference for whenever they need to understand how to use the different brush options. Definitely worth checking out. I'm now going to throw in a sneaky non-Blender recommendation. So there's a channel called Schnee, or Schnee, I think it's Schnee, who does videos breaking down these super, super popular like streaming service series like Arcane. And in this particular video, they essentially break down why Arcane has such great storytelling. And the reason I want to recommend this is because I know there are a lot of people out there that want to make like animated shorts with Blender, and storytelling is a really important element to that. And Arcane has a really interesting way of doing it, which Schnee describes as the great overlap technique. So just for the sake of learning, how to tell better stories and have compelling characters, I just think this will be a really interesting video to watch because there's a lot of information contained in this video essay that kind of made me think more about how I would write characters in the future if I was going to do like a proper animated series. So yeah, I just wanted to throw that one in there. Okay, so for the next recommendation, you may have known recently that Blender has a new experimental branch for adding simulation nodes to geometry nodes. Simulation nodes essentially allows you to do a certain type of looping to simulate a change inside of the geometry nodes tree. Now, there have been lots of really cool demonstrations appearing on Twitter and on YouTube, kind of breaking down how this works. It's a really interesting system, but I want to recommend a video by CG Matter, also now known as I'm Breaking News. He uh, changes his name occasionally, makes it a bit confusing to keep track of him, but I'm sure you'll find the content. The video I want to recommend is called simulation nodes how and he basically shows you how to create this dissolving mesh effect you can see here how it's running inside of the 3d view the really interesting thing about simulation nodes is that the actual simulation part of the node tree is contained inside of this unique frame between the simulation input and output nodes it's a really interesting design that i don't really expect them to make but this will basically give you a glimpse for what the future of geo nodes in blender will look like so let's actually take a look at a few recent examples of what people have been making but before we do i will just show you that if you go to the builder.blender.org page download slash experimental. Here you'll be able to find the experimental branches and down here you will see Blender 3.5 geometry node simulation. Now obviously depending on when you watch this video this page will look different. You know if you're watching in the distant future this may already be in the regular main build of Blender so just be aware that things change and things move around so you may need to do some extra research of your own just to make sure you get the right version. So a friend of mine Chris made this lovely default cube mimic where as you can see as the cube is opening and closing it's got this kind of like visceral sticky kind of gross element moving around. So this is done with the simulation nodes. And also another friend and Blender genius, Ben BBBN19, also now known as Cartesian Caramel, has done a lovely melty chocolate pizza demonstration. So again, using this simulation feature, they wanted to see if it's possible to have something rip apart, and you can. So yeah, I just think it's really interesting starting to see these procedural dynamic results coming out. Also, Ben has a YouTube channel, which I have recommended several times in this series. Recently, they've been doing a lot of like um, live streams 
nodes showing their different experiments and demonstrations. A lot of geometry node stuff if you want to dive in there and kind of take a look at how they're doing things. So let's take a look at the recent one, Random Projects, where they do a demonstration of how this stuff works. But if you're eagle eyed, you can see the new simulation frames inside of there. And also Ben is just a really cool person to hang around with. So yeah, if you like live streams, it might be worth checking out their channel. Let's take a look at another demonstration. So from Hemigon on Twitter, they've done this interesting fluid and turbulence simulation. So fluid simulation made with geometry nodes. And I think the result is really, really cool. But again, this all just goes to show the kind of complex effects you'll be able to generate using these new features. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see what people come up with in the future. And especially as the Blender dev team kind of lean into this more, I think it's leading us towards a new simulation revolution in Blender. I should also say that Hemigon has their own YouTube channel as well. And on here, they like to release shorts where they show some of their experimental results. So again, another good source of inspiration. Another channel I think deserves some more attention is Little Rolls. So they've been doing a nice variety of content. Random sci-fi displacement, no modeling, Spider-Verse style comic shader in Blender. I think that'll be a popular one. As well as some other useful videos. It seems they like to do a lot of shader centric stuff, but not exclusively. But it seems like there are some really useful shader techniques in here. Again, like a clay material for Blender, hand-drawn shader tutorial, cell shading in Blender. So yeah, I think there's a nice amount to unpack there. But again, when I see smaller channels and, you know, people trying to produce useful educational content, I want to do what I can to lift them up. And as you can see, I think Little Rolls deserves a lot more attention than what they're getting. So if you're interested in exploring their content and maybe showing them some encouragement, then feel free. Also, I'm going to throw in another bit of self-promotion here. Ugh, cringe, self-promotion. So I have a small second channel called Kurt Studio. It's just like a completely stress-free place where I just throw a few discussions and get feedback on things. It's also where I review artworks occasionally when we do our Discord art challenges. Recently, I did a video sharing five Blender business ideas that I'm not super confident about or I just wanted some extra feedback on. And I think this will be an interesting one for people. We also discussed AI art tools as well briefly. But one of the projects in particular called Blender Cinema is something that people seem to have resonated with quite a bit. I'm not going to talk too much about it here, but if you're interested in more discussion related content, then maybe you'll find something interesting. But also now that we're coming to the end of this lovely community roundup, how could I not mention Charge, the new Blender open movie? Finally, it's out and it looks amazing. If you haven't watched it, you definitely need to. Not to spoil too much, what I would say is this one really reminded me more of, you know, those Overwatch cinematic shorts. It's definitely got that kind of vibe, you know, semi-realistic, kind of vibrant and colorful. Tries to tell a heartwarming story as well. So yes, and also if you want to learn more about the creation process, they have just released a making of video as well, Making of Charge Blender Open Movie, where they get different members of the Blender Studio team to discuss how they made the short and also some of the challenges they encountered along the way, some of the newer features in Blender that kind of assisted in that creation process, and also, you know, just some of the lessons they learned. I think it's really nice that they're doing these high production quality videos, kind of making this knowledge accessible to people, just kind of visually showing people, hey, here at Blender, this is what we're experimenting with. This is what we like. This is what we found out. Take a look at what we did. So yeah, definitely exciting and inspirational. I'm sure this short's going to do a lot to encourage people to start making their own short films as well. If you made it this far through the video, feel free to put a chocolate emoji in the comments. When you do this, it basically shows me who made it this far through the video. It's a much better metric than YouTube's analytics page. It also helps me to connect with you because I remember a lot of the people that do post the emojis. So thank you so much for that. And remember, there is an official playlist for this series if you want to keep track of all the recommendations or even binge watch them. So head on over to my channel page and take a look. Also, I make and sell Blender tools, a lot of free stuff as well. If you head on over to curtishold.online slash store, you will find not only my own tools, including modular workspaces, which we mentioned earlier, but also my favorite recommendations for other courses and add-ons that I think are really, really useful for the community. So yeah, there's just a lot to discover. So yeah, happy holidays, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic time. Please let me know if you've been inspired by anything recently in the comments. Maybe this will be my last video of the year. I'm not sure. If it is, then happy new year. It's been a fantastic year. I've learned so many lessons this year and yeah, can't wait for the next one. So love you all. Have a fantastic day and I will see you next time.